In this video, we're going to talk about Git and GitHub and source control. Now, you might remember GitHub from our previous section where we used it to put the website online. But I'll show you that it is so much more than that. More importantly, Git and GitHub is used by most professional companies, and it is a skill that is expected to be known by all developers now. So this is an important section. One of the first things most developers have to do on their first day at the job is to submit something called a pull request, which uses Git and GitHub. We'll get through that in this section. Don't worry. You're going to learn all of this, and it's going to make sense. Let's first start with source control. Up until now, we have only worked on small files. No team members, just ourselves, just a couple of files. But in real life, you're most likely not the only developer on a team. Most likely the projects are huge. There's many, many files. Source control allows us to make sure that multiple people can work on the same file from different locations. Think of it as Google Docs that allows people to collaborate on one document. But enough talk, let's actually check it out. I have over here set up two folders. One is for myself, Andre, who just started a new job at X company. And I have Marcy here, who has been working at the company for a while. And she has project files over here. I'm actually using the files from our background generator video. Now, without Git or GitHub, what I can do is just copy and paste these files. So I have whatever Marcy has, and we can start working on these files. I can have my developer environment here with my terminal and my sublime text, and I can work on whatever changes that need to be made on the app. And Marcy over here also has her own version where she can work on it. And we're both working on the same project. But let's say that both Marcy and I are working on this project and she decides to change the project name from gradient background to super background. And at the same time, in my project, I decide to call this cool background. Well, now you'll have to set up a meeting between myself and Marcy and decide how we should change the code. And this is a small example, but you can imagine that as different pro programmers work together, there's always going to be this issue of one person changing one thing and another person changing another thing. This is where source control came in. And source control is a way to control this where we have one place instead of our own computers. In this case, it's just represented by the folder that I have in here. Instead of each of us having a copy of the project, with source control, we have a copy of the project, but there is a centralized location up somewhere, maybe owned by the company or somewhere on the internet that has the ultimate version that we each talk to to make sure that we each have the same version. Getting GitHub is a way to do this, to be able to use source control. And as a matter of fact, it's the de facto way of doing this. So like I said before, this is most likely the tool you'll be using every single day at your workplace. So if I go to the GitHub website here, what it allows us to do is it's a place, a central place that both Andre and Marcy can talk to. So even though we work on the same files, the same project, I can ask this central location, such as GitHub, hey, has Marcy made any changes? And Marcy can ask, hey, has Andre made any changes? And every once in a while, you'll get something like this where we have cool background and super background where we have something called a merge conflict. What GitHub allows us to do is say, hey, I noticed there is a merge conflict. I see that you guys have both changed your background. I don't know who's right, but here's the information. Andre and Marcy, can you guys talk amongst yourself and figure it out? That's pretty much the workflow. So let's actually see what this looks like. The first thing we want to do is set up a GitHub account. If you haven't done it in the previous exercises, 
you absolutely should start a GitHub account. It's free. And like I said before, if you're a developer, you just need to have it. It's where everybody puts their projects. It's where you work. You'll be spending a lot of time on this website. You might remember that when we had the GitHub project, I also told you to get GitHub for desktop. Although we use that to make things simpler during that video, this is actually not the recommended way of doing it. It allows you to visually see and interact with GitHub, but it's kind of looked down upon by employers and most people use the terminal or the command prompt to actually do this. So I won't be teaching you this way just because I think it's bad practice and getting used to the terminal is important. I'm gonna close that and we're gonna get this started. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on start a project. And here we're gonna call it whatever we want. We'll call it background generator. And you also wanna leave it as public and we wanna click on initialize this with a readme and we'll click create repository. And what that does, well, we've created a new project on GitHub and here, the readme, which is just a file that describes your project, you can see that it's here. We can type into the readme whatever we want and it'll describe our project. But let's go back. If Marcy, let's say Marcy has been working at this company for a long time. I'm actually gonna remove my files here. Marcy has been working at this company for a long time and the employer finally decided, hey, we need to use GitHub. We're gonna hire this new guy, Andre. We wanna make sure that you both can work on it, on the project together without any issues. Can you put the project up on GitHub? So what Marcy will do is she will go to GitHub, create background generator, and then she's going to click right over here to clone or download. And she's gonna make sure it says use HTTPS and from here, you just click on this button, which copies this link to your keyboard. Then Marcy goes to her terminal. And right now we're in documents. We wanna have the project in the Marcy folder. So I'll CD into Marcy. If I click LS, I see that, yep, I have my files. Now, the first command that we're gonna learn is called git clone and then copy and paste what we copy from the website. We're just saying, hey, clone this project from github.com. So I press enter and there you go. Everything is downloaded. If I go back to the folder now, I see that I have background generator. If I double click this, you'll see that I have a .git folder here that's actually hidden. You might not even see it on your laptop if you don't have this feature on your computer enabled. But this .git now allows me to communicate with GitHub. So what we can do now, Marcy can copy and paste these files and put it into background generator. Now let me show you the next git command. Marcy right now, if we see, she's in her folder, but now we need to go into background generator because if we do any git commands here, well, it won't work because it's not a Git project. We need to actually go inside of the project that was created on GitHub. So I'm going to CD into that directory. Notice here, I have my terminal set so that it actually shows me what GitHub location I'm in. And I'll explain what master means later. Now that we're here, we can look at all our files. Yep, I see that now I have my readme, which I created on GitHub, plus the files that I copy and paste it. We need to sync this so that if I go into my background generator, instead of the readme files, Marcy can put up her files on GitHub. The way we do that is our second command, git status. It tells us that we have untracked files. That is, we have index.html, script.js, and style that are untracked. And it says use git add file to include what, you, what will be committed. So now that we see our status of what we have in our folder, we can say git add and the file name. So I can do index.html git add script.js. 
and git add style.css. Let's clear this so we can see it. And now I can do git status again, just to see what our status is. And now I have your branches up to date, changes to be committed. You see that now with add, we've said, hey, we want to add these changes. We have new files that we've added and says to be committed. So the second step is to do something called git commit. And git commit says, hey, I'm committing that these are the changes that I want to make to GitHub. And it allows you to pass a message so that on GitHub, it'll show the message. When Andre comes back in, he can say, oh, Marcy added these files and this is the message. And we do that by doing this. And within here, within the double quotes, I can say adding starting project. Close the bracket, press enter. I'm going to clear this. Now there's one last step. We've added, we did git add to add our changes, then git commit to commit and say, yeah, we're locking in those changes. And then finally, we need to let github.com know that these are the changes. So we do git push. And there you go. It has now been pushed to this repository. So if I go back and I refresh, look at that. It's the same thing that we did when we put up our first website online. But instead of using the desktop version of GitHub, we use the command line. And now we have our project, which is very good. Now let's go back to our example. So Marcy has been working on this project. There's a Git repository and I just joined the company and now I need to start working on this. What do I do? Now I need to access GitHub and get the copy of background generator. The way I do that, well, I go into my folder and I do the same thing. I do git clone and then I copy and paste the repository just like before. Git clone and clone the repo. And there you go. If I go back to my folder, look at that. I have background generator. So we're both working now on background generator, but not off of each other's files. We're working with whatever version is on GitHub. All right, so now more realistic. We go back to working and on the first day of my job, I say, I'm gonna change the gradient background title, actually the H1 tag to cool generator. If I save this and I do get status, oh, well, I'm not in a Git repository right now. If you remember, I have to go into background generator. Let me open that up a bit so you can see. There you go. Again, these git commands won't work if you're not in a folder that has the doc git folder. So let me do that. CD into background generator. I'm going to clear this and I'm going to say git status. And look at that. It tells me that I've modified index.html file. And if we remember, I will say git add. I only have one file. I can do index.html. But if I wanted, to, if I had multiple files and I want to just commit all of them at once, I can just do the period. So I'll do that and then git commit and I'll add a message changing title. I press enter. I'm going to clear this. Okay. And again, I do git push. And it looks like everything went through. So let's open that up and check it out. I now refresh here and well, we haven't seen any changes, but we now see that we have three commits. We have the initial commit, the adding background project that Marcy did, and it shows you all the files that were added. And if I go back, I have the changing title commit. And now I see that, yeah, Andre, just change the background generator, which is in red, to cool generator. 
so as you can see, we have a history of all the changes and we can always go back if there's any mistakes. But there's one issue right now. If I go back to the code and I go to Marcy's computer, I see that, well, she still has background generator here. Why is that? Well, because her computer doesn't know that GitHub has been updated. The next command I'm going to show you, this is the last one I'm going to show you in this video, is git pull. So remember git push to push the changes to github.com and git pull to pull whatever is the latest. So I do git pull and there you go. You see over here that it shows me that index.html file was, was changed. Now you see that my title has been changed to cool generator. Let's just say that Marcy saw my first change and she really, really likes how I've added cool generator, but I think she wants to make it capitalized. Again, she's going to save that. She's going to say git status. All right, I have my index.html file, git add, then git commit, and I'll add the message cap to lies title, and then git push. There you go. Again, I go back, I refresh, and now there's four commits, and we see that capitalized title is the new changes. The first day of work is done. I come into the next day of work, and well, I want to start with whatever the latest project is of background generator. And let's say Marcy worked all night to change that title to cool capitalized. I want to make sure that I have the most updated version. So what I do is when I get into work on, in the morning, I'll say, well, I want to make sure that if there's any changes that Marcy made, I know about them. So I'm going to say git pull and notice here how the titles going to change after I do the pull. And now I click to sublime text and there you go. Cool generator. All right. In the next video, we're going to expand on this and show you what happens if both Marcy and Andre make the same changes. What does GitHub do? I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.